morning, everyone. This is Maria Gibbons, and, along with Mary Zyrock and Gail Forster. And we're going to go through with you today uh, eSource. And as you all know, eSource is taking the place of eQuote. And we're going to go through this. I believe most of you on this call probably have met me and know me. Just give you a little bit about my background. I have over 15 years delivering and developing training. And my background mostly includes delivering on Microsoft products as well as database products. I've been with the state now for two years and uh, working with Mary Zyrock and the rest of the team here. And as a group, uh, we're going to uh, answer any question that you have. If you look on your screen, you'll see that there's an area to put questions in. If you can please list your questions in that area. And at the end of this webinar, we'll go over those questions. The webinar is probably going to last a little more than an hour. I know it's scheduled for two hours. We schedule question and answer time in there as well. First thing we want to talk about, the purpose of this webinar is to list the difference between eQuote and eSource. We're going to describe the new features for processing RFQs via eSource. We'll describe the new features for processing RFIs, RFQCs, and RFPs. We'll look at the new RFQ, RFQC, and RFI, and RFP templates. We'll talk about that. We'll list steps for awarding RFQ and RFPs in eSource, as well as describe the NOIA and NOA procedures. Now, as of September 15th, eQuote is going to become eSource. Now, eSource is your web-based software application that's going to allow the issuing officer to post requests for quotations or RFQs, requests for information, RFIs, requests for proposals, RFPs, and requests for qualified contractors, RFQCs in an electronic format. Whereas you're doing it now, uh, you're doing RFQs and eQuote now and everything else you're mostly posting in the GPR. Once the issuing officer posts the event in eSource, suppliers that are registered in Team Georgia Marketplace and subscribed will receive an electronic notification to receive an email alerting them of the availability of the solicitation. Suppliers can sign on to eSource, review the requirements, and decide whether they want to participate in the solicitation. I just want to take a moment here and talk about suppliers being subscribed. This is an electronic system. In order for them to be notified electronically, they must be subscribed in Team Georgia Marketplace. Now, I know that you're adding suppliers in. We're, we're, we want to encourage you to encourage your suppliers to subscribe because this way they'll be able to receive all of the electronic notifications coming from whether it's the GPR, Team Georgia Marketplace, or eSource. If you're adding in suppliers, I said the best practice is to probably add them in at one time and send them an email learning them that this is a courtesy because subscribing will give them all of the updates. If they're not subscribed and they're only registered because they must be registered to respond to a solicitation, they won't know if the solicitation that's originally posted apply that changes may if the changes may make it apply to them and they won't know that if they're not subscribed. So that is also discussed in other training that, we'll, you, that we have. So know that in order for them to be notified, they must be subscribed. Now, eSource has been enhanced to include these features, online posting of various procurement methods, and we already talked about the RFQ, RFI, RFQC, and RFP. Also, there are different types of awards that you're able to do via eSource. You can do a single award, a split award, secondary, primary award, and multiple award. We'll be talking about those as we go through the posting methods. Also, automatic creation of the notice of intent to award, the NOIA, and the notice of award, NOA, is done via the system. If you look here, the eSource e is going to use security levels. A level zero is an issuing officer who can only post via eSource, and they're only able to post RFQs, RFIs, and RFQCs. A level one has access to their own solicitations on the GPR and eSource, and they can post RFQs, RFIs, RFPs, and RFQCs. A level two is usually that supervisor or that mid-level purchasing officer who has access to their own solicitations on the GPR and eSource and can post everything as well as view any solicitations that have been posted 
uh, by anyone they may be supervising. A level six can see post to the GPR and eSource has full access to both to the system and can view solicitations in a DY. So it's, it's important to know what your security level is, that you can discuss that with your APO or your CUPO who sets the security level. And if they have, if an APO or CUPO has any questions, please feel free to contact us here. Now there has been some verbiage change from eQuote to eSource. We just want to go over that. eQuote will be referred to as eSource. A bid is either going to be referred to as a solicitation, a sourcing event, or an event. Vendors will be referred to as suppliers, and bidders will be referred to as suppliers or offers. Let's start to discuss, discuss requests for quotes or RFQs in eSource. As with eQuote, you can continue to process your request for quotes in eSource. The difference between eQuote and eSource is as follows. The uh, post the process or RFQs, you can do that in both systems. You'll be able to do that in eSource. A new function of eSource is that you must use the RFQ template, and we'll discuss the RFQ template. There's availability in eSource to award using multiple scenarios. Also, you're able to create the NOIA and the NOA automatically via eSource. And also, like with equal eSource, notify suppliers of the NOIA in NOA automatically. Discussing that template, it is now mandatory to attach the RFQ template when posting a request for quotation event in eSource. The issuing officer must complete the template prior to posting the RFQ event. When you enter into post your event, you'll notice that you cannot move on unless you attach that RFQ template. The system will allow you access to that document. However, we're recommending that you fill out that document prior to, to beginning the posting process. The RFQ template contains the following information. It discusses the purpose of the procurement, a schedule of events, your contract term, including your years or calendar year or fiscal year, instructions to suppliers. It will give submittal instructions, your mandatory requirements, your pricing rules, cost structure instructions, evaluation and award instructions, contract terms and conditions, and also provide a list of all the attachments. There will be a webinar to discuss this template on September 20th at 10 a.m. That webinar will be conducted by Mary Scruggs. It is suggested that everyone attend that because it's going to discuss all the changes and all the required templates that are now required for eSource and Team Georgia Marketplace. You locate the template by accessing the DOAS website, go, clicking on state purchasing under the state and local section on the screen. You scroll to the seven stages of procurement, and you're going to scroll down to stage three, solicitation preparation, and select SPD-022, and that's going to be your state entity ERFQ template. You complete the form, save it to your desktop, and attach when necessary. Now, when posting RFQs in eSource, the issuing officer has the following award types. You're able to award to a single or primary supplier. And this single supplier award applies to a single line or multiple line sourcing event. If the sourcing event has multiple lines, the sourcing event is awarded to the single supplier with the lowest overall cost, the lowest overall offer. This, there has been no change from this from EQUO. It's the same single award that you saw in EQUO. Split, or, split of the primary award is divided by lines. That's when you can achieve a significantly lower price by splitting the line among suppliers, awarding a lower cost line to one supplier and the next lower cost line to another supplier. So that would be splitting between multiple suppliers. There's also the ability to award a primary secondary award. Now, this award identifies a primary source of supply for a particular contract or line item and a secondary or backup source of supply for the same contract or line item. We want you to note that you're going to use this as a last scenario, and only when it's only to be utilized if a backup supplier may be necessary from time to time. An example of a primary secondary award can be DOT's purchase of asphalt mix. Now, DOT has specific mix requirements for paving roads. 
plants that make these mixes have other customers in addition to DOT. DOT may use different mixes. The paving mix is needed when requested, so it's on short order. Because demand may be greater than production, the plant may not be able to supply what is needed when it is needed. And because of time constraints, it's necessary to have a backup source of supply with fixed contract terms and prices so that DOT can avoid emergency purchases. In this primary secondary award scenario, the suppliers do not have equal standing. DOT must go to the primary supplier first. You want to note that you must use the primary supplier first. And if they're unable to meet your demand, then you go to your secondary source. And this has already been negotiated. Pricing has already been negotiated. So this is an instance when you would use a primary secondary award. If you're making a a single award, if that's an example of this, is a state entity needs to purchase, a, for example, purple hooded sweatshirts for outdoor maintenance crew. The hooded sweatshirts must have a specific embroidered logo on the upper right side of the uniform, and orders will be placed on short notice. It's determined that this will be awarded to a single supplier. Now, this is going to go to a single supplier because of the specific need and the short demand, and it's been negotiated with that contract, excuse me, with that supplier. So you would make this a single award. Now, some of the differences that you're going to see when posting an RFQ that's from equal to e-source is the following screen. Before you complete the header panel, you have to choose your procurement method. The three, the three new selections to complete the e-source bid process is as follows. You're going to select your bid process, and that's going to give you a choice of an RFI, RFP, RFQ, or an RFQC. Once you select your bid process, you move on to the step two, and that's going to be selecting your purchasing type. And that's either going to be, in this instance, for an RFQ, state entity contract, or an open market contract, excuse me, or open market purchase. In step three, you have to choose the category type, and that's going to be one of the four categories here at the state, information technology, goods, services and special projects, or infrastructure. Once you've made these selections, your screen will look as follows. You, this is the screen you're going to see. You choose Submit, and you're going to complete the header panel pretty much the same way you were completing it when you did e-quotes. Uh, however, you, wanted, you do want to note that the offers conference information, you do fill in that information with any offers conference instructions, any uh, information pertaining to that conference. You attach and excuse me, you assign your NIGP codes, and if you see at the, the last choice here, you have to attach your ERFQ template in order to submit this for notification. And it is a mandatory step. Once you've completed the posting process and you've evaluated and you've decided on making an award, so another change from equal to eSource you'll see as follows, that you have the ability, again, to select a single award or primary secondary award as well as split the award. If you select a single award, you can look on the screen where you just would select the supplier by selecting the radio button. The two new features here from eQuote now to eSource is the award reject reason as well as the award comments. This is completing your NOIA and your NOA information. You click the drop down and you would you would select your award your award or reject reason. So basically, you would, for those suppliers who are not being awarded, you would select the reason why you're rejecting them. You're, you add comments in the comments area, whereas it would be who's getting the award and any further comments necessary for the, those suppliers who are not being awarded or any further rejection comments. A primary secondary award that we discussed earlier, you would select the radio button for your primary supplier and the checkbox for your secondary supplier. You then go on and complete your award reject reasons as well as your award comments. And again, this is completing the automatic NOIA and NOA information that we discussed. If you scroll further down the screen, you'll notice that there is a NOIA status button. And it'll say set NOIA optional. Because the award amount is less than $100,000, it is an optional step. If the award is greater than $100,000 and you click Award eSource, it will automatically set the NOIA for you. And this, the text here in red 
states the state what I just said. If it if it's greater than $100,000, by clicking on award, you're automatically setting the NOIA, and the 10-day protest period begins at that point. Okay. Now, eSource now provides, again, like we're saying, this is just another confirmation screen and just the differences. I do want you to note the difference why it says optional. Optional is there if it's less than $100,000, and it's optional to set the NOIA status. Again, clicking on award eSource automatically sets the NOIA status for any award greater than $100,000. There is training for eSource for RSQs. It's, uh, if you have already taken eQuo, it's pretty much the same course. Also, but it will also discuss these new, these new functions and features. The course for eSource is one day. And again, it's the same as equal, but for any new uh, purchasing professionals, it's recommended that you do or require for basic certification that you do take the eSource course. And you can log on to the LMS and enroll in that eSource course. eSource now has the ability to post electronically RFIs, RFPs, and RFQCs. You know, when you use a request for information to obtain supplemental information or obtain all the necessary information to create the requirements of an anticipated sourcing event. When you use an RFI as a procurement method, you are simply seeking information. Therefore, you do not use this method to complete an award. So you want to note, you do not an award from an RFI. You are simply seeking information. Just like with Posting an R2, when posting an RFI, you log into the system, you go to main menu, click on post a new e-source, and the solicitation process that you're going to choose is RFI, and the purchasing type will automatically, the only selection to choose is request for information, no contract award, that's automatically set. The category type is, in this instance, again, would be one of the four categories here at the state. Once you've made your selections here, you click Submit, and you complete the header panel information the same way as if you were completing an RFQ. It is, however, necessary to attach that ERFI template. So you must attach that ERFI template. It is mandatory. The purpose of the ERFI template will state the purpose of the procurement as well as a schedule of events. It will give instructions to suppliers all of your submittal instructions, your requested information, as well as provide a list of attachments. Again, this template will be discussed in the, in the training webinar that will be held September 20th at 10 a.m. It will be a part of that template discussion. But it is a mandatory step when posting your RFI. Now, posting an RFI event continues through the selection of suppliers via your NIGP codes because this is going to uh, help you select what suppliers are going to be, what subscribed suppliers are going to be notified. Remember, cost is not associated with the event and no award can be made from an RFI. And the following screen here just serves as the final step of posting your event. It will give you a list of subscribed suppliers who have been notified of the event. Posting and awarding an RFP in the eSource system. You, you use a request for proposal when you anticipate multiple solutions to your solicitation. You want to use a waiting process to rate the supplier's response to the requirements of the solicitation, and you want to negotiate. The RFP award, excuse me, the RFP results in award, however, the selection is based on the result of the combined scores of, of your price and your technical evaluation. There are new training, this, there will be a new training course associated with RFIs. RFPs and RFQCs. That training course will be 3025L. It will be one day in length. However, there are prerequisites associated with this training course. You must have taken, in addition, um, I know fundamentals is not listed on there. However, fundamentals is a requirement of taking that training course. You would have had to take eSource for RFQs, 30110L, 
And again, that's going to review the posting and awarding steps of an RFQ. You must take RFP template, and, the, and that's a web-based training, 3015W, and it, will get, it is a training course on completing the RFP template. You must take the RFP development, 3020L, and it's a course that reviews the steps to create the requirements and the evaluation points for each of the requirements for an RFP and assemble the spreadsheets to contain all the RFP requirements. Prior to posting your RFP, you want to determine if the sourcing event will be over your state entity's DPA. This is necessary. You don't want to begin posting and then have to go back out and request a one-time exceed delegated purchasing authority. You want to determine that and you want to complete this one-time request to exceed delegated purchasing authority form and submit that form to ccmrouting at doas.ga.gov. And again, do this prior to posting and developing your RFP. It will be a great time saver. It is located on the DOAS website under the seven stages of procurement. If you log into eSource and, and access the eSource main menu, click on Post a New eSource. Select RFP as your solicitation process. Your purchasing type uh, will be open market, state entity contract, and I believe there's another selection in there, but that would be the only one that would apply to state entities, and you would select your category type. Choose Submit, and again, complete the header information as you would for an RFQ or an RFI. You would state whether or not you're going to hold an offers conference, and it again is mandatory to attach certain documents. Now, when creating an R when posting an RFP, you also have to post the ERFP template as well as your ERFP requirements. The system will not let you move on unless you post these, excuse me, unless you attach these. In the ERFP requirements area, there will be three spreadsheets that you would choose from. You're only required to choose one. You may, you, you may use all three of them, but the requirement is only to select and attach one of them. You also have to attach your ERFP cost sheet in order to move on in the process. The ERP template contains the following information. It will discuss the purpose of the procurement, your RFP certification, it will list the schedule of events, your contract terms and your number of years, whether they're calendar year or fiscal year, instructions to suppliers, it will give you submittal instructions, it will list your proposal factors, um, those are those spreadsheets that we discussed as a uh, that you would have to attach, whether it be your mandatory requirements, your mandatory scored requirements, or your additional questions. You would also need to attach that it will help you have your cost proposal in here, your proposal evaluation and negotiation and award, your scoring criteria, contract terms and conditions, and a list of all attachments. This again will be discussed in the webinar on September 20th at 10 a.m. And again, all documents are required to be attached prior to posting the event. The system will not let you go forward without ta attaching the ERP template, your ERP requirements, and your ERP cost sheet. Once the evaluation of the RFP is complete, you, begin, you can begin the award process. And depending on the result of your RFP evaluation, you can award the event using any of the following methodologies. You can use a single supplier award. You can split the award between suppliers. You can award to multiple suppliers. Or you can award to a primary, secondary supplier. As with RFQs, a, the single award or the primary award is awarded. You award the entire RFP to a single supplier. The split of the primary award, you would, you, you would divide the RFP award, and this award type results in a contract awarded to more than one supplier. Your primary secondary, again, used to identify a backup source. And you would still have your primary source, and there would be a secondary backup source of supply for the same contract. A new award scenario for RFPs in eSource is the multiple or the overlapping award. And you use this to make overlapping contract awards to suppliers. It's commonly used for statewide contracts and should rarely occur 
on a state entity contract. An example of a multiple contract award on a statewide contract is the current office furniture contract. In the multiple award scenario, each supplier has equal standing, and the state entity may choose amongst the supplier as desired. This multiple or this overlapping award may provide the availability to have multiple suppliers on the same contract and allow the purchasing officer to select what supplier they will make the purchase from. Once you've selected multiple, the following screens are displayed. You would enter your supplier award amount. You would select those suppliers you will be making the multiple awards to. It's also necessary to pick the uh, uh, NIGP code, the award NIGP code. And again, you must complete the NOIA, NOA information by providing the award reject reason as well as the award comment. The NOI, and you set if it's below $100,000, it's optional, but if it's above $100,000, it's mandatory, and it will automatically set the NOIA uh, in the system. Upload your RFP award documents by clicking on the Upload RFP Award Documents button, and you would complete the award, and you will be provided from the system will provide you an award summary. And in this award summary, you, it'll be your it'll either be your NOIA or your your NOA or your notice of award. On this screen, you have the availability to enter in your own message. If you want to enter a message into the supplier, you can add the message directly in the system, and they will be notified via email. Your final step is to post the award and notify the suppliers. Once you've selected single, and if you were selecting a single award scenario for an RFP, you would, again, select your NIGP codes, and you can award up to three. You enter in your award amount. You click on the radio button for single award. Again, you complete the award of reject reasons and award comments to complete your NOA or your NOIA. And you would move on to uh, clicking, you would upload, excuse me, upload your additional award documents. And then by selecting award your RFP, you will begin the final step for completing the award. If you were splitting an RFP, you would just select by checking the split award. You would check the boxes, and you would determine by selecting the amount by which you're going to be splitting the award. So if one supplier in this scenario is going to be give, uh, given 50000 and the next awarded supplier is then also awarded 50000 you still enter in your award reject reasons and your award comments for your NOIA. Or your, in this instance, it would be an NOIA. And uh, upload your documents, and you would then process the award. The primary secondary looks Pretty, it looks almost just like the RFQ, except you have to choose the NIGP code that's going to be used for the award. The radio button selects your primary person you're awarding to, and by checking the box, you would select your secondary. And again, enter in your NOIA and your NOA information by providing your reject reasons and as well as your comments, and continue through as previously discussed. RFQCs in eSource. Now, an RFQC allows you to outline specific standards or requirements that the suppliers must meet or exceed. Only those suppliers that meet or exceed these standards or requirements are invited to participate in a second step that results in award, either an RFQ or an RFP sourcing event. The RFQC does not require the suppliers to provide pricing information. Once you select the suppliers based on the standards and requirements outlined in the RFQC, the issuing officer continues with a second step by posting an RFQ or an RFP event. The state of Georgia uses the request for qualified contractors, or RFQC, as a two-step process. To process a request for qualified contractors as a two-step two process, step one, the purpose of this step is to pre-qualify the suppliers based on specific standards and requirements. And the next step, the purpose is to invite the selected suppliers from step one to participate in an RFQ or an RFP event. After logging on and accessing this screen by uh, choosing Post a New eSource, 
and selecting RFQC. You then again would select your purchasing type as well as your category type and select submit. Again, you complete the header information pretty much the same way you did previously. However, you have to go through, um, excuse me, I'm going to back up here. There, this screen here, when you enter in, when you're creating your RFQC, again, you are going to complete your header information the same way. Again, if you're going to have an offers conference, you would put the, that information in, as well as your NIGP code to select the subscribe suppliers who are going to be notified for the event. You, you do have to attach your required document, your ERQC template, the same way that it was mandatory on the RFQ and the RFP and the RFI, it is mandatory here. The purpose of that RFQC template is to talk about the purpose of the procurement as well as the schedule of events, to provide instructions to suppliers, to give submittal instructions, and your qualification information, such as your mandatory, your mandatory scored, and your additional score spreadsheet. There is no need for a cost proposal. There will be a, you will discuss the evaluation process and also provide a list of attachments. This template will also be discussed in the webinar on September 20th at 10 a.m. Once you've selected your NIGP codes and you select a submit, it'll tell you how many suppliers, are, how many subscribed suppliers are going to be notified, and you click next. Once you click next, it'll give you a list of your suppliers, and you would accept the list. And the next screen here will be your final screen to notify your suppliers. You click notify. Now, after receiving the responses from the participating suppliers and you conduct the evaluation based on the type of requirements included in your RFQC, you would move on and you would, you would either pass-fail or uh, evaluate them technically. If it's pass-fail, use the evaluation method if the requirements are written for a yes-no response. You would do a technical evaluation if you are using your mandatory requirements, your mandatory score requirements, and or your additional score of requirements. Use the points assigned for each question to conduct the technical evaluation. And for this process, you need an evaluation committee to perform the evaluation just the same way you would for an RFP. And again, that process is discussed in the RFP evaluation course that you should enroll in on the LMS. With the exception um, that the score for pricing is not incorporated as a part of the final score. So there is no pricing score for the RFQC. Once the RFQC has been posted and you've received in your responses and they've been evaluated following the procedures that we've discussed or that you've learned in the, our, in the evaluation class, you are ready to qualify your suppliers. You log back into the system and under review and maintenance, you would then select Qualify Suppliers RFQC. And you would select, because again, you did offline your evaluation, you would select by checking the box the qualified suppliers and they will move on and be eligible for step two. After you've selected them, you, you select uh, Submit. This screen displays the list of qualified suppliers. So if you were to select that, when you go back in, you would see those suppliers who are qualified. In step two, posting an RFQ or an RFP, suppliers that have been qualified in step one move on to participate in step two. And step two consists of posting an RFQ or an RFP, depending on what you've determined is best. Step two begins once the suppliers have been selected using the RFQC or once step one is complete. Things you want to keep in mind, you cannot make an award from an RFQC or after the completion of step one. So after you've completed the RFQC by posting and selecting and, and qualifying your suppliers, you cannot make an award from that step. You cannot add additional suppliers on step two. Only the suppliers that have been pre-qualified via step one are eligible to participate in an RFQ or an RFP that is based on an RFQC. Start the posting of the RFQC by accessing the main menu of an eSource and clicking on Post New eSource. You complete the 
uh, bid process information the same way you did with an RFQ and an RFP. Then select, once you're, when you enter in, you'll notice that you have a referring to RFQC area. You click the drop down and a list of, of those RFQCs that you have uh, developed and qualified will appear and you would select the RFQC you're going to base your RFP or your RFQ. The example we are using here is an, on an RFP. So you, you select the uh, following RFQC that you're going to use and you complete the process for posting an RFP. If you want to see what, con what suppliers are going to be, that have been pre-qualified, you would just click on the link for qualified contractors and it will show you those pre-qualified suppliers. Those are the suppliers who are eligible for responding to responding to, in this example, the RFP. And you would continue the posting R of the RFP or the RFQ the same way as instructed earlier. Now, in summary, what we covered today, we discussed what e-source is, the new enhancements of the RFQ process, the posting of RFIs, RFPs, and RFQCs in e-source, as well as the award method. What we're going to do right now, we're going to uh, gather and look at the questions, and we're going to take a, be a brief couple minute pause to look at the questions, and then we're going to begin answering the questions. Um, if you have any questions and you've, if you have not already entered the questions into the system, please do so now. And just give us a couple of minutes and we'll be back on the line. Okay, our first question, do we have to take a training class for eSource instead of eQuote? Yes, you do. Uh, eQuote is now eSource, and any the, if you go into the LMS, eQuote will not be available. It will say eSource for RFQs or eSource for RFIs, RFQCs, and RFPs. Now, next question, are security levels 3, 4, and 5 active, and what are they for? Yeah, um, this is Novella Peters. The security levels that are available to the agency are 0, 1, and 6, 2, and 6. 0 and 1 are only allowed to do RFQs. Um, Level four it allowed to do RFPs, RFQs, RFIs, RFQCs. Level six is your agency APO who are, who is allowed to do all types as well as set up additional users. Level three, four, 
five state purchases? So those are yeah, those level for state entities three, four, and five are not available. Those are state purchasing uh, security levels. Next question, do we need to take both equal and e-source training or just e-source? Just e-source. You would only need to take just e-source. Next question, how can we get a copy of the information used for this, inf uh, this webinar? This, it will be posted. One of the webinars conducted will be posted. I don't have a time frame, but they will be posted. Uh, next question, when a buyer indicates the solicitation is for a state entity contract, after the award, will the system update the contract index? No, you still have to go in and update the contract index as you would at any other time. You have to go in and update the ACI. If a if I have a requisition today, can I still use the regular equal system or shall or shall I wait until eSource becomes active on September 15th? It's a choice. If you don't have an urgent need, I would suggest you wait and do it in a new system. We'd be very happy if you did that. But eQuotes will be still available through the eSource system if you had posted prior. Yes, so all prior eQuotes will be available under the new eSource system. So you're not going to lose anything. Everything will transition over. If you choose to hold to post a new one until the 15th, that's fine. But eQuote will be up until 5 o'clock. Tuesday. Um, the and we have a lot of questions about the webinar being available. That information is going to be, and correct me if I'm wrong, is available through the LMS. Or it will be, it'll, they'll be on the website, the same way every, where you access other webinars. State Purchasing has a webinar page, and it's accessible from State Purchasing website. You go to training on the right in the featured, and you will see a link for recorded webinars. Next question, how can we ensure that we have the correct security levels? Who do we contact? That would be your APO, your CUPO, who determines what your security level would be based on your based on uh, what you would, what it is that you procure. So your your APO, your CUPO decides on your security level. And then the CUPO or APO can contact help desk if that security level needs to be changed. Actually, the APO has the option to assign whatever security level they are. Online. Yes. <laughs> Next question, if you have already completed equal and passed the test, do you have to still take the e-source class? No, you do not. And you would only take the new e-source class if you were going to be developing RFPs, doing RFIs, or RQCs. Does e-source have the availability to reissue an award in the event an award falls through or there is a protest? It's, it would still have the option to reaward, just like equal. You still have the availability to reaward. Next question: What if you are the APO? If that is regarding the uh, security level access, you can contact again the help desk care, and then someone can show you where you would go to access how to set security levels. From the APO security level is at level six, and again, level six allows the APO to set up their agency users and assign security levels to those users. Next question: Will the webinar address how offer responses to RFPs or RQCs should be distributed to evaluation teams? Um, I'm thinking that. That will be addressed through the RFP evaluation and selection course um, as, as the training for this e-source is going to be systems only. The actual application and doing the evaluation, you should be taking the um, RFP evaluation and selection. We will have the webinar on September 20th that will go over the new templates, the RFQC and RFP templates, but we will not go into how to do the evaluation and how to use the Excel spreadsheet. 
if anyone um, wants to try an RFP prior to the September 20th, um, we're willing to assist them, Mary Scruggs of Legal and myself, Novella Peters, so you can contact either one of us and we will walk you through the process or an RFQC prior to September 20th. If I have the e-quote post that will close today, if I have to cancel it and rebid, when I repost the solicitation and e-source, will, will it notify the supplier that the original e-quote has been canceled? Um, just try, give, a, give me a second. I'm trying to mesh out this question. Yes. I mean, all, all of the features you currently have will be carried over to new e-source, but if you're currently an e-quote and you cancel an e-quote, you at that point have the option to notify suppliers that you've canceled this e-quote. When you post a new e-quote, the system will make a selection again and notify them that there's a new e-quote. If you choose to, you may put in the descriptive section of that e-quote that this e-quote was formally posted as e-quote whatever number. and Tell them this is a repost of that. Okay. Next question, when will the RFQ template be available for use? September, September 15th. is. Uh, they will be available on September 15th, but the webinar is on the 20th. And like Novella said, if you need to do that prior to the webinar, there will be assistance for you to use those templates. If you have, I, I, we're getting questions on the training and the certification and asking whether or not if you've taken the equal class, you then have to take the, um, the RFP classes. Is it mandatory to take the eSource class to obtain certification? Well, uh, eSource is part of the basic certification, and you cannot receive RFP certification, which is the CPM, unless you have already obtained your basic certification. Now the new eSource class is not a part of the basic, but will be compiled into the CPM, into the RFP section of training. So that is not a requirement of basic certification. Um, yes, you still need to post public work projects on the GPR through the Board of Regents is under our preview for public work projects, so it's up to you whether you want to use eSource or not. But you can use eSource to post public work projects. It's your choice. Okay, next question. Will the eSource system automatically create an eSource number? Yes, it will, and it will be preceded with ES and then it will also have the posting methodology, whether it's an RFQ, an RFP, RFI, or RFQC, and then it will assign a number. So yes, just like eQuote, eSource will automatically set the number. Next question, if an RFQ is already in progress under the old system, however, does not close until after 9-15, will we continue to process the award in the old system? No. The the uh, RFP that you posted on the eQuote will show in the eSource system, and you can complete it there. There will it'll, you'll have all the options that are currently will be available on the eSource will be available for you to complete this uh, do the award or posting of notice of intent for that RFQ that you posted on the eQuote. The number will be the same. It'll just show up under the eSource option. Okay, next question. If I have an RFI posted now, will I have to cancel and reissue since it is not due to close until October 1st? No, this is the same, this is similar to what we've been already stating, that you will continue an equal and it will automatically carry over on September 15th. You do not have to cancel or reissue. You just continue the process. Your equals in the system will be preceded with EQ. Um, instead of ES, that, that's how you'll know 
which ones have been developed in EQUOTE. They'll be preceded with EQ and not ES. Now you asked on the RFI. So the RFI is currently, I expect, on the GPR. You, oh, that's yeah, where she would yeah. have posted mm -hmm. it, and you should go ahead and complete it over there. There's no reason, no requirement for you to, you know, cancel that and redo it. It's a normal GPR, RFI, and that's where you should complete it. Okay, are there any other questions? Okay, well, thank you for your attendance. If you have any questions, do feel free to contact uh, myself uh, or Mary Zyrak uh, via our, either our personal email, or you can also send questions to training at doas.ga.gov, and we'll be more than happy to assist you with any of your questions. And if we are unable to, we'll get them to the correct people. Also, this webinar, again, will be posted on the DOAS website. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for your time. And uh, we look forward to training you in the future. Have a great day.